Okay, as we approach the end of this series, I wanted to do a bit of customization to Kirby itself. That's the beauty of it. And something with WordPress, you can do this too, but it's kind of hacky and uh, it makes stuff just load slower and just look crappier. So uh, with Kirby, it's pretty plain and simple. The biggest change I want to make to the CMS is at this point we have, let me log in. It's, it's basically using this green accent color and everything's black which looks fine it's not terrible but it's pretty um, not relative to Alyssa's branding so what I want to do is deal with that and to do that you can actually include a config file that sets a path to another style sheet similar to what you do in WordPress uh, more or less but in this case you can do this I haven't found a way to adjust the actual login panel. I might tweak that and see if it's possible in this video. I haven't actually tried it. So, uh, but the actual panel itself can be uh, included. I, to save time, I kind of went ahead and did this behind the scenes, but I'm going to create a file that's got no underscore and it's called panel.scss. If you're using the same files as me, this will compile down into its own relative style sheet and it should output to our CSS uh, also included is the old index. So I'm actually going to remove that. Okay. So if all goes well, this should update to like a blue brand like we have, which is cool. Simple as that. Um, you do have to kind of experiment with the selectors it's not as easy as you would think to get some of this stuff like i had to go like literally from the body left to right class get the actual icons themselves and do a different you know colors and stuff there so you kind of have to hack it in a, in a sense of uh, better uh, terms there uh, I did import our variables feature just so we can make use of our fonts and our actual colors and stuff too uh, so that's something to pay attention to. If you don't have that, this thing will fail when you compile it with uh, Gulp. So that's that part. Obviously, when you go live, you need to put a license key here. I'm going to omit that from this video because I, obviously I don't want you to steal my shit. From there, we can add, essentially be almost done. I think what I want to do is maybe experiment with login form itself. I don't know that we can adjust that CSS, but I'm going to try it real quick. So I'm going to see, see our color comes through here. Like if we could put a logo up here, that'd be cool. Um, looks like if it's in its own file, Kirby or wait, panel, maybe we can do that app. Top bars, widgets, bootstrap helpers. See, the issue with doing this is um, when this stuff updates, we're kind of shit out of luck and have to redo this. So I don't even know if that's something we want to mess with or not. Um, pages. I'm trying to find where this would be. Uploader, that's not it. Forms, auth, I guess that's it. So this isn't even, I guess it would be views. He's doing MVC here, which is model view controller. So we've got controllers, uh, models I think are set up elsewhere, uh, but we've got the view, login, message, Okay, so if I just do like a test here, yeah, it's there. So if you want to get, I mean, this, this is going to require upkeep, but we could essentially, I think, call our logo in this, this way. I might actually do, in a previous video, we included some um, just SVG code. That's probably the better route to take here. So we've got it there. Um, 
and we can do some inline styling. This is hacky as shit, but that's something we can do. Um, text line center, it's not working. Gotta save it. Okay, maybe we need to do a div around that. I don't recommend doing this, but if you wanted to just for grins and you don't update Kirby a ton, maybe this is a route you could go. But don't say I didn't warn you. There we go. So we got something like that. And we can maybe give it some margin. Mm. And I think it went it bigger than this. I'm going to go 20 more on each. That's the beauty of SVGs is you can do this and it's not like a mortal sin, you know. Um, it, it's not going to penalize you for increasing the width in line of an image because SVGs are uh, scalable. They don't mess up when you do that. So the form's got padding around it. I'm kind of stuck leaving that as is. I could probably do negative margin below so it kind of comes up. There we go. And I might add just a bit more at the top. Cool. So that's a way you could customize that. I wouldn't get too crazy with it because as Kirby updates, that will go out the window. You might save this in your own little snippet and include it in, in some way, shape, or form. Um, in fact, I might do that and see if it works. So we don't have to constantly add all of this code. I'm going to copy that out. And see if this works. We'll say login logo. And then go into our site, snippets, new file, login logo. PHP, paste that in, save it. And we obviously need to have the whole path here. So I think if we go site, I don't know if this is possible, guys. I think it's going to air out. Yeah, that's not going to work. All right, so scratch that idea. I'm sure there's a way you can include it, just a traditional PHP. PHP so like, and then get to like, uh, the file dir thing and then do all that stuff but I'm gonna I'm gonna forget about it but if you want to extend that feel free you can set different roles if you want to there are um, ways of doing that you'd probably go into this advanced where are we at? Extending configuration. I know there's a, there's a doc on it. Um, it's, I think, fairly simple to do, but I think that sets things up. I need to figure out exactly where we're going to and how we're going to launch this. I still need to activate my license, as you could notice. Then we need to integrate HTTPS on our server. You can use Let's Encrypt. It's a very awesome free version of it instead of spending ridiculous amount at GoDaddy or something. Personally, I don't deal with a lot of that stuff simply because I use a service called Cloudways. It does all that for me. It like adds that Let's Encrypt certificate to my server. Um, this is what the app would look like 
and it's actually hosted. How Cloudways works is they use, consider them a broker for uh, web hosts, but they, they come to you with a GUI interface to control everything. So you may have heard of DigitalOcean or something like that. That's what I'm using for my service, uh, but I'm going through Cloudways who bundles on top of that to offer a way to install applications with like a point and click solution. Uh, DigitalOcean just gives you the servers. So from there you have to install these you know, dependencies and uh, specific environments for your, your sites. It's super, if, if you know enough, it's super useful. You can install almost any language on them and get things up and running. I've never had a successful attempt at getting things like awesome on it. So I went with this route uh, with Cloudways. Um, I have a link in the description if you want to check out your own. It's a little more expensive, obviously, than DigitalOcean, but to me, it, the uptime and keep and everything is, is there. It's bar none. So I had three servers live that I use for testing, a master one for internal stuff, and a client server that are all hosted in San Fran. You can choose where they're hosted based on your locale. And then you can have team collaboration projects, all that stuff too. And you can add servers and apps at any time. It's pretty nice. I'd recommend it. Very easy to set up. The way I usually work is through a deployment through Git. So this site is hosted on GitHub right now. Um, I won't, I don't know that I want to go through all this with you because it's kind of sensitive material, sensitive keys and stuff. I don't want to really put out there on the, the uh, YouTuber ecosphere. So um, there are guides on this, but essentially you can just go the old simple FTP method if you want and use something like transmit, like I've got done here. It's just an FTP client. Really recommend not doing that just for the sake of security and the sake of getting the files put up on your server in a correct way. So what I tend to do is I have my Git repo um, going I'll just show you, like, if I do, let me get into this endless. Okay, so at the moment, I know I have some changes to make. Uh, if I do a get status, it's the stuff that's been modified. So I'm going to just do get commit m um, round out final changes to panel and incorporate animations this was from the last video um, so something like that I need to actually add them to and then do that okay so cool so if I do git push this sends it to github right now the beautiful thing is with my server or many of your hosts can offer this, maybe not Bluehost or something very uh, shared hosting wise. Honestly, this day and age, I'd kind of recommend going away from that just for speed and, and security and stuff like that. At this stage, I'm basically done with the site. So, okay, say I want to upload it. At this stage, I generate SSH keys. Then I'd head to GitHub and add those into What do we got here? Access tokens. I'm not going in that. You'll you'll or actually SSH these. So if you do something like that, you can add those. And then how it works is it basically a webhook kind of thing. So it, when it sees changes on the GitHub repo, I can do this git pull thing. Uh, in fact, here let me just do this real quick. So I could select a branch and it will be at that remote address and then the deployment path. So when I click start deployment here, it'll pull from that GitHub repo and in, import the latest code. So let me, I'll just cut this part out of the video, I suppose, and go for it. On this repo, if I want to deploy using a third party thing, like my, my app that I'm going to use, my, my hosting, uh, this is where you'd enter your SSH keys that they give you. I downloaded those from my host uh, cloudways and I'm going to import the keys into this so we'll just call it um, endless cloudways 
and paste in the key there. So now if all goes right, having entered in my SSH keys on the repo itself for this particular deployment area, I know this is, might be confusing, but it's really not. At the end, once you do it enough times, you get used to it. Uh, this will link to that GitHub repo here, which you just grab the SSH version of the link there and then paste, paste it here. I click this refresh icon and it finds all the branches that are on that repo. I go to master and we'll actually just use the public one. Uh, so you could start deployment at this point and it should sync those files. The problem with that is I still need to, to do the license here. So what I'm gonna do is do that behind the scenes and uh, I think that will wrap things up for this site. So guys, it's been a pleasure showing you this entire process. I think I'm up to like 35 videos or something like that. Hopefully the next time you see, after you see this video, you'll see the site live, you can kind of experiment. As always, check out the GitHub repo, uh, which I'll be putting in the show notes or the actual video description below and also on my blog. Please check out my blog, it's web-crunch.com. And also if you like this video and these videos, I'd love it if you loved it, <laughs> liked it, or sh shared it with your friends, uh, subscribe to the channel, that'd be awesome too. I have pl plans to do more like this using new technologies and stuff. Um, I have a personal site I'd like to redesign, same with my agency site. There's tons of stuff I have on the horizon. I'm also experimenting with Ruby on Rails and I might do a lot more videos on those since there isn't a ton out there. I can't thank you enough for following along if you made it this far and I hope to see you in the next series. If you have any uh, comments or feedback or anything, it's definitely welcome. I appreciate it all. All right, peace.